Hello friends, uh, this is Jose Serpa and I'm back with another video. Um, this time I want to talk a, a little bit about one of the um, products or uh, it's a question related to a, to a product that I get quite often when I'm sitting down with a family talking about their personal finances. Um, it's a question that comes up, it, it's, a, it's a product, it's a decision I guess that has some stigma around it. Um, you know, depending on the cultural background, um, you know, each one of us might have a different opinion on the topic of life insurance. And, and I get it, right? Because life insurance is directly related to, to someone passing away. And that's always a difficult and maybe even awkward type of conversation. I know that depending on your family background, culture, ethnicity, where you're from, you might have a different feel or take on life insurance and whether it's something that you believe in or not, or it's necessary or not. So I just want to share my thoughts on that over these next few minutes. Now, in doing so, I want to first start with an example in, um, in the Gospels from Jesus, okay? And, and we're going to be reading from John 19, um, <clears throat> verse 25 through 27. So uh, bear with me as I just read through this. It's really short, but it's really going to help me to share my thoughts on the whole topic of, you know, whether life insurance, I, you know, I believe is necessary or, or not, right? So in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 25, it says, Therefore the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. So the scene that is set up for us here in verse 15 is, is something, is one that it's known to a lot of us. That if you've either seen Jesus movies or you've read the Gospels, you listen to preachings, but it's, it's when Jesus is, is at the cross um, and there's a small crowd there. And amongst that crowd is his mom. Then verse 16 says, when Jesus then saw his mother and the, the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother. So not, on, not only was Mary there, but John, the apostle, the, the disciple, um, was also there. So whenever you read in the Gospel of John, the phrase, the disciple, the disciple whom he loved, it was really John referring to himself. So Jesus is on the cross. He's at the point of death. His mom has seen this entire um, torture session that had been going on now for several hours. And he, Jesus addresses Mary, his mom, and John. So this is what it says, um, starting at the end of verse 26 and then verse 27. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. So this is powerful here. Basically, Jesus is at the cross. And he's, I can imagine he's evaluating um, how things are evolving um, and what the outcome is. And obviously, the significance of Jesus' death is transcendent, right? Because it, it provides forgiveness of sin and, and salvation for us based on our faith in him and, and God's grace in, in our lives. However, Jesus also confronted himself with another reality. That he was not only the son of God, but he was also a human, right? And as a human, he had a family. Um, and within the context of family, he has a mother. Um, and he understood his, his full value as a person. That his full value as a person was not only what he was doing on the cross for you and me from an erasing sin perspective, right? But he also understood that it, within the full value of who he is as a person, 
he has a role, a, a physical life human role within his family, specifically to his mother and emotional support for her. And you can say that at the cross, Jesus wanted to make sure that he took care of business, meaning that he, he left nothing undone, that he thought of everything. And right before dying, he basically hands off the care of his mother to John. Now, this is powerful here because you have the Son of God taking into account that when he humanly passes on, not, not just that he passes on from death and then to resurrection, but he knew that eventually he was going to descend into heaven. He knew that physically, at some point, he was no longer going to be there for Mary, for his mom. And he wanted to make that decision and take care of that while he was still alive. When we look at the product or the financial tool of life insurance, I, I want you to have the same backdrop in mind. I want you to understand that, and that's my perspective, right? My, my, my personal thought on it and how I see it, right? I, I represent or I mean um, different things for my wife and, and for my daughter. I, I represent to them emotional care, friendship, listening to them. And I also represent to them um, income, right? Because I, I work and my income provides for the household. And I want to be able to make as many decisions or the proper decisions in life so that when I'm no longer here with them, I'm, I'm able to still take care of them as much as I can, even though I'm not physically present. And that's the example that Jesus sets forth. And, and, and that's what I want you to, to ponder upon, right? When, when we're looking at a decision in regards to life insurance, it's, it's really about that. It's, it's really about um, when I'm no longer here, right? What, what is the state, what is the, the condition of what I am leaving behind and how do I want them, those people that I love, to be taken care of? The thing about financial planning and, and specifically life insurance is that it, it really addresses two things. It addresses a known and it addresses an unknown. There is one thing that we all know, okay? We all know that at, at some point, um, we're going to pass away, right? And which is what Jesus knew. He knew that he was not, not just that he was passing away and resurrected, but that he was going to ascend. So physically, he knew that at some point, he was not going to be there for, for, for Mary. So that's the known. We, we, we know, all of us, right? At some point, we're going to pass away. But then there's the unknown. The unknown is the one. Right? We don't know when we're going to pass away. And the only guarantees that we have is right now, today. So one of the things I encourage you is, is to live and decide in that today. Okay, Make the decision today of how you want the unknown to be handled. How, what do you want to occur? How do you want to take care of the Mary in your life, right? That, the, the, the family. What do you want that to look like? I really encourage you to consider if, if, you know, to really take it to heart, okay? Financial planning is, isn't about enjoying money today. Financial planning, is, it's about a big picture. Uh, and in most cases, it's about sacrificing today so we can have a better tomorrow. Okay. So I leave you with that thought, with that um, message in regards to the financial product or tools that we refer to as 
life insurance. If you have any specific or further questions um, about life insurance, I, I personally do not sell the product, but I know I could definitely make recommendations on it. If, and if, if there's anything I could serve you in, please let me know. So wish you the best. Thank you for watching and there's more videos to come.